One more time, please. Now this one from Shukadeva Goswami, I found when I discovered this, I said, wow, this one is really good. Listen. So Shukadeva is speaking. My dear king, devotees interested in hearing and chanting. How many of us are interested in hearing and chanting? Good. So this is for you. Shukadeva is speaking to you. So such persons interested in hearing and chanting regularly discuss the pure characteristics of Bharat Maharaj. You can read about Bharat Maharaj in the fifth canto. How in three lifetimes he achieved perfection. He was the son of God, Rishabdev. But he made a mistake. And he became attached to a deer. So take a hint. If you have a cat or dog in your house, don't get too attached. Look at what happened to Bharat. He was so attached to his pet deer that in his next life he became a deer. So if you have a cat and dog in your house, don't become a cat and dog in your next life. You can take care, but don't become too attached. That's my comment. So, so after the birth as a deer, it's the second life, then he took birth as Jada Bharat and he achieved perfection. And even that life was very exciting because one time, he was going to be offered by some dacoits to goddess Kali. They were going to sacrifice him. Yeeks. Would you imagine that? You will be sacrificed to goddess Kali? I don't think any of us would want to be in that position. And the goddess Kali saved him. That's, an ex that's also in very nice things to read in Srimad Bhagavatam. How many people read Srimad Bhagavatam regularly? Only a few hands. Come on. Step it up. Time is marching on. Okay. So they regularly discuss Bharat and praise his activities. If one submissively hears and chants about the all auspicious Maharaj Bharat, one's lifespan and material opulences certainly increase. Just by reading about Bharat. There's so much benediction in Srimad Bhagavatam. It shouldn't be something that just is on your shelf. Oh yes, I have Bhagavatam. I never read it, but I have it. No, 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 no. Take advantage. One can become very famous and easily attain promotion to the heavenly planets or attain liberation. Whatever one desires can be attained simply by hearing, chanting, and glorifying the activities of Maharaj Bharat. In this way, one can fulfill all material and spiritual desires. Wow. Fifth Canto is all of, it's there. One does not have to ask anyone for these things. For simply by studying the life of Maharaj Bharat, one can attain all desirable things. The, there's one chapter in Bhagavatam. At the end of the second canto, the tenth chapter of that second canto says, Bhagavatam is the answer to all questions. Everything is in Srimad Bhagavatam. It's there for you to take advantage. Okay, let's see who the... Oh! How many people uh, worship or pray or follow Lord Shiva? It's okay. Just... Good. 
Now we're going to hear from Lord Shiva. He has something to tell us. It's good. Lord Shiva is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. Nayasya maya guna chitta vritti beer. Narikshato hyan vapi drishtatir jate. Ishe yatano jitta manyu ranga sang. Kastang na manyeta jigishur atmana. So this is in the fifth canto. There's this region in the material realm. Lord Shiva lives there with his consort, Goddess Bhavani. And on this region, everybody who follows Lord Shiva, they offer this prayer. This is Sri Rudra Uvacha. So, don't get mad at me. This is what Lord Shiva says. Okay? Lord Shiva says, We cannot control the force of our anger. Therefore, when we look at material things, we cannot avoid feeling attraction or repulsion for them. But the Supreme Lord is never affected in this way. So Lord Shiva is making a distinction between Him and who's the Supreme Lord? Krishna. So He's, not me, I'm not saying. Lord Shiva is saying He's making a distinction between Himself and God. When the Supreme Lord glances over the material world, so which Lord is he referring to? Who glances? Mahavishnu, right? Mahavishnu is the one who glances. So when he glances over the material world for the purpose of creating, maintaining, and destroying it, he is not affected even to the lightest degree therefore one who desires to conquer the force of the senses so this is what you're talking about material desires means the force of the senses Lord Shiva is saying if you desire to conquer the force of your senses he uses the word must you must take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. You have to take shelter of the Supreme Lord, Krishna. Then you will be victorious. How many people believe what Lord Shiva just said? You don't believe? You don't believe? Come on. Everybody should believe the words of the Lord. Otherwise, he might get angry at us. And he might start dancing. Watch out. Yes, we better believe what Lord Shiva says. We're still in the fifth Kent. Oh, this is a powerful mantra. This one is Prahlad. Are you ready? This one is so powerful. I want you to chant. Om Namo Bhagavate Narasinghaya. Namaste just teja say Avir Avir Bhava Vadranaka Vadradangstra Karmashayan Randaya Randaya Tamo Grasa Grasa Om Swaha Abayam Abayam Atmani Buishta Om Kshraum I love that word Kshraum Come on, say it like you mean Om Kshraum Come on, this is powerful stuff Vajranaka huh? Nails like thunderbolts Badra Dangstra, that means, I think, teeth like thunderbolts. Okay, 
So Prahlad prays. I o- Please repeat. I offer my respectful obeisances. Unto Nrsingha Dev, the source of all power. O oh my Lord, who possesses nails and teeth, just like thunderbolts, kindly vanquish our demon like desires for fruitive activity in the material world. So here's, that's what material desire is. Fruit, desires for fruit, that's material. So Prahlad is saying to Lord Nisringa, you have nails and teeth like thunderbolts. Vanquish these things that are in my heart. This is how to pray. Please repeat. Please appear in our hearts. And drive away our ignorance. So that by your mercy we may become fearless in the struggle for existence in this material world. So, fearless. This is how to become fearless. You pray to Lord Nisringa. That's why when Prabhupada used to get sick, he told us, Pray, that's when we started the Nisringa prayers. So whenever Prabhupada gets sick, we would do these prayers to Lord Nisringa. Who's doing the, oh, you are singing tonight prayers to Lord Nisringa. So do it powerful. I want all of our desires to be taken out by Lord Nisringa's nails and teeth. We want to become fearless. All right. Now this next one is very, very interesting. This one, yes, it's... Anyway, let's see. Sat sat yang dishyatitang artito nirnang naibartado yat punar artita yata Swayang vidhate bhajatam anichatam icha pidhanang nijapada palavam. So this prayer is by the demigods in heaven. All the demigods in heaven, this is how they pray. Very interesting. People pray to the demigods for material desires, right? People do that. This is how the demigods pray please repeat the supreme personality of Godhead fulfills the material desires of a devotee who approaches him with such motives so interesting the demigods admit that if you pray to Krishna for a material desire, he will give it. But there's a catch. So the demigods say, but he does not bestow benedictions upon the devotee that will cause the devotee to demand more benedictions again. Yes, Krishna doesn't want to be bothered. If you approach Krishna with material desires, okay, one time. Now watch what they say next. Please repeat. However, the Lord willingly gives the devotee shelter at his own lotus feet even though such a person does not aspire for it. And that shelter actually satisfies all one's desires. That is the Supreme Personality's special mercy. There is a similar verse in the 10th canto 
where Krishna is speaking to Yudhishthir. And Krishna says, this is Krishna. Krishna says, my first installment of mercy is I take everything away from my devotee. And this is why many people don't worship Krishna. What? He's going to take my car? He's going to take my house? I'm not going to worship. And you see people in the kirtan. They're afraid. Because Krishna himself said, that's my first installment of mercy. I crush. And Prabhupada personally had experience of this. He used to quote that verse. He said, yes, Krishna did it to me. I thought I would become, because in Prabhupada's chart, it said he would become very wealthy. So Prabhupada was doing a business. So what did Krishna do? Burned it down. And he lost everything. But he remembered that verse of what Krishna told. So this is the same idea. The demigods know this. That yes, you can approach Krishna for some material desire and the way it's going to work out you will eventually come to the shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. That is, as it's the demigod said, that is Krishna's special mercy. All right. Now we go to the sixth canto. This is during the time of Ajamila. When Ajamil was going to be taken to hell by the Yamadutas, the Vishnu Dutas came. The Vishnu Dutas came because Ajamil said what word? Did he say it like that? Narayan! Come on. <laughs> yes. He was being taken to hell. He didn't say Narayan. <laughs> He was scared out of his wits. Narayan! And then the Vishnu Dutas came. And they told the Yamadutas, you cannot do this. And the Yamadutas, what are you talking about? This guy is, and they had the whole rap sheet on him. He did this, he did this, he did this. He... And the Vishnu Dutas said, nope. He's pure. So they had some discussion. And the Vishnu Dutas defeated the Yamadutas. Here's one of the things they said. Please repeat. Although one may neutralize, Although one may neutralize the reactions of sinful life, of sinful life through austerity, austerity charity, charity, vows, vows and, other and other such methods, these pious acts Cannot uproot, cannot uproot material desires in the heart. So this is the thing. All these other material remedies. Yes, you can neutralize the sinful reaction. But the desire is still in the heart. However, please repeat. If one serves the lotus feet of the personality of Godhead, one is immediately freed from all contamination. So this is the difference between bhakti and karmakand. Karmakand, yes, you can become free from your sinful reactions but the desire to commit sin is still there but when you do bhakti what's happening that sinful desire is being uprooted now depending on your situation my situation that may be hard work because those material desires are deep deep we have no idea how deep they are. But don't worry. This process of devotional service is able to pull it out. 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम